Okay, Junior Roberts here again. We're on to question 3 of the January 2016 physics past paper. We're doing a series of videos, uh, basically revisiting that paper. So, again, we're on question 3, and we're just going to go right into it. Okay, so this question here says, Table 2 shows the type of thermometer, design feature, and the reason for each design feature right now we're asked to complete the table by inserting the appropriate information all right so okay so here again we have our table right and as you can see we have the type of thermometer the design feature and the reason for design feature so we're going to start with the mercury in glass laboratory thermometer all right so the design feature is that it has a narrow bore and the reason for that time is to allow for mercury to move up the tube easily right so the narrow bore right gives us a small space for that mercury to expand and having that narrow bore gives us the ability to have that liquid going up the tube quite easily all right so next thing we're going to look at this design feature here it says um, it has a constriction in bore Right, and the reason for that is uh, for retaining a measured temperature, right? And the reason, what well, the thermometer that we have, which has a constriction in the bore, right, is our clinical thermometer, right? So we're gonna say clinical, clinical thermometer meter. Right, and again, the purpose of the constriction is to retain the measured temperature. So, in the hospitals, whenever you take a temperature measurement, uh, you actually need time to read the temperature. So, that constriction actually prevents the mercury from running down back into the bulb. So, we're able to actually measure the temperature uh, quite accurately. Now, in terms of the thermocouple, so the thermocouple is a very unique type of thermometer that is made from two different metals that are connected in a loop. Now one of those metals is actually kept at a very low temperature, usually around zero degrees, and the other wire is used to measure the temperature. And the thermocouple is actually very sensitive because any change in any differences in the two temperatures of the two metals will actually allow a current flow and the value for that current flow can be used to determine the difference in the temperatures of the two wires. Alright, so this part in the question wants us to define the upper and the lower fixed points, right? Upper and the lower fixed points on the Celsius temperature scale and state their respective values, right? So for the upper fixed point, right? We're gonna start with that. So let's say upper fixed point. So upper fixed point, right? So we're gonna say that this is is the temperature at which pure water boils right and for our case we know that pure water boils at uh, which is 100 degrees celsius all right so we're saying that the upper fixed point is uh, the temperature at which pure water will boil right and again that temperature is 100 degrees celsius so the upper fixed point for the celsius scale is 100 degrees celsius right now for the lower fixed point lower fixed point right so we're going to say that this is the temperature at which pure water freezes Right, so freezes, which 
as we know, is zero degrees Celsius, right? So what we're seeing is that the upper fixed point is 100 degrees Celsius. The upper fixed point is 100 degrees Celsius, which again is the temperature at which pure water will boil, while the lower fixed point is zero degrees, at which we know that pure water freezes, right? So that's that for that question. So let's continue. All right. So here we have an, another diagram. So this question is says um, figure two shows a sealed flask which contains a fixed mass of gas held at a constant volume. Right. Now these two terms will, will become important to us as we assess the question going forward. All right. So uh, it says that uh, so we have a diagram. We have a thermometer, pressure gauge. Uh, gas and it is um submerged in a few fl uh, it is submerged in a fluid and then we actually apply heat to that fluid which will actually be transferred to the gas in the flask now it is said that when heated the temperature and pressure of the gas increases as shown below all right now what is, what i want us to do is to complete the table by converting the temperatures to kelvin right so now whenever we're converting from so let me put a note right here to convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, right? What we simply do is to simply add 273, right? So whatever temperature we have in degrees Celsius, we're going to add 273 to it to get our temperature in Kelvin. Right, so for this case, I'm gonna just put on the calculator to assist us to get this done com quickly. So here we want to find the temperature in Kelvin when the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna say 35 plus 273, right, and we get that our temperature in Kelvin is 308. Kelvin, right? Now, when the temperature is 63, so we say 63 plus 273, and that gives us an answer of 336 Kelvin, right? Then, now when the temperature is 91 degrees Celsius, we say 91 plus 273, and that gives us an answer of 364 Kelvin, right? So that's our table completed. Right, so we can move on to see what else is in store for us. So, this question is, is, is the pressure loss supported by the set of data? Right, now I'm going to start by simply defining the pressure law. So the pressure law states that, so let me write the pressure law. Law states that for a fixed mass, of gas at a constant volume the pressure is directly proportional channel to the Kelvin temperature temperature All right so that's the pressure law right whenever we have a fixed mass of gas at a constant volume uh, the pressure of that gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature all right so if we look by, look at uh, our table we see that uh, whenever we have an increase in the, when we have an increase in the Kelvin temperature, there's a there's also an associated increase in the pressure, right? So that essentially uh, demonstrates that this is actually uh, justifying or supporting the pressure law. And again, the question uh, as before I said that we had a fixed mass of gas, right? And it was at constant volume, right? So we can uh, go to say that since so. We can say that yes, the data 
supports the pressure law. Law. Right? And this is so because since an increase in the Kelvin temperature results in an increase in pressure right so that's oh we would say that this is supported also the pressure law interestingly also says that uh, p1 over t1 is equal to a constant right and we can further go to say that p1 over t1 is equal to p2 over t2 right and we can actually go ahead and actually use two sets of data to actually test this principle so again if we say p1 over t1 is equal to p2 over t2 right and let us say we take this as p1 and this as p2 this has t1 and this has t2 so t1 is 308 kelvin and that is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 5 divided by 336 All right so i'm going to work this side first All right and see if when i work this side i get the same answer All right so if i say 1 Point 0.1 expressed to the 5 divided by 308, right? I get 357.14, right? And if I try on the left hand side, I say 1.2 expressed to the 5 equal to that divided by 336, and I get the same answer, 357.14, right? So this also helps to verify that this data supports the pressure law. Again, the pressure law states that for a fixed mass of gas uh, at a constant volume, the pressure of the gas is di directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. And you can recall that uh, whenever we say something is directly proportional, it means then if there's an increase in one quantity, it's going to result in an increase in the other quantity. Alright, so again, this was Junior Roberts coming to you with real juniorroberts.com. If there was any questions in this video, please post them down below in comments. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe and click the bell notification so you'll never miss another video. Thank you for watching.